Hey carnivores, SB fam, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. I wanted to film a quick little intro before I invite on my guests for today's video. As you guys can see in the title, this is going to be about a specific 90 day program. It's called the Carnivore Feasting and Fasting Program, which was created and developed by my personal coach, Coach Raymond Nazon. I've actually personally worked with him before. I was about two Two and a half years into my carnivore journey and I documented my progress here on my YouTube channel last summer when I attempted his feasting and fasting program. So if you followed me since last year or you remember watching videos about me documenting my beef only and fasting journey, I was actually under the coaching and guidance of Coach Raymond. So it's truly my honor to invite him back onto my channel to introduce and explain what this 90 day feasting and fasting program is all about. And on top of that I have the extreme honor to invite on two more guests. So this is also going to be my first ever carnivore roundtable video. Professor Bart K is also going to appear because he has personally completed this 90-day program. So he will be sharing all of his results, benefits, and experience from the 90 days when he worked with Coach Raymond. Finally, I will also be inviting on Coach Stephen Thomas, who is going to share his current progress in the 90-day program. I know it's going to be a lot of testosterone in this video, so to balance it out, I will be dropping in some of my comments, my experience, and my thoughts throughout the video. And I will also feature some female success stories before and afters throughout the video as well. Before I invite on my guests, I did want to let you guys know that all three of these gentlemen are going to be in the July 30 Day Carnivore Challenge. Professor Barquet will be a featured July guest speaker, so he will be visiting the Steak and Butter Gang to answer all of our questions and to inspire us with his knowledge and wisdom. Coach Ray Raymond and Coach Steven are part of the SBG team of coaches, so you guys will have regular access to both of these coaches to ask them your questions, to learn Coach Raymond's complete 90-day feasting and fasting program, and to work with Coach Steven on fat loss and fitness. The link to sign up and join the Steak and Butter Gang is sbgmeetup.com as shown on the screen. You can also click the link down below in the description box for more details and to directly sign up. So without further ado, let me invite invite on my guests, Professor Bart, Coach Raymond, Coach Steven, to talk about fat loss and body recomposition. All right. So I'm going to give you each some time to introduce yourself. Let's start with Raymond. I'm Raymond Nazon, and I have been a carnivore for about uh, four years and seven months. I'm also a fasting carnivore. So I've been doing uh, fasting just a little bit longer than I've been doing carnivore. I've healed many, many ailments along the way. Diverticulitis have toned down quite a bit. Uh, heel spurs, plantar fasciitis are totally gone. Sleep apnea, snoring, dandruff, skin issues, all of that got uh, resolved during the carnivore diet. Bart, introduce yourself. Hi, yes, uh, I've been carnivore for, ooh, I think this is my seventh year at 95% or so. And this year from January the 1st onwards, I've been doing basically 100%. Um, under the um, guidance and coaching of Coach Raymond and Coach Emily and his crew of coaches there at the Steak and Butter Gang, what have I noticed? A near resolution of quite crippling um, anxiety, bipolar, agoraphobic type tendencies even, less bloating, less dad bod, more six pack, um, vast improvement to bowel function, less chronic systemic inflammation, just a myriad of benefits, really. it's It's been an incredible thing. It's almost as if this is the way humans are supposed to eat and we've been doing it for four and a half million years or something. And Coach Stephen, introduce yourself real quick. I'm 58 and I have been kind of all for three years. And up until I was age 50, I was a high carb idiot, uh, personal trainer, uh, for a long, long time, and I believed all the high-carb rubbish. I ate healthy, which was skimmed milk and freshly squeezed orange juice and grains and fruit, and I avoided fat and I avoided meat, and I didn't smoke ever, and I didn't drink ever, and then I got to 49. I was fat, pre-diabetic. I had a colonoscopy required because of lower left quadrant pain and a coronary arterial calcium score of 639. Mm. 
Yes, but for all of those people that uh, follow all that claptrap, I couldn't believe just how bad I was. And one of the good things about that, and Bart, particularly as a scientist, were like, there was nothing there to confound it because I didn't smoke and I didn't drink and I was active and I followed absolutely everything to the letter. So I got qualified in uh, diabetes and obesity. I've also got a uh, science degree I've nearly finished, which is in physiology and health sciences. Three years of being a carnivore has completely changed everything. Uh, Obviously not pre-diabetic anymore. Uh, My body composition improved. I don't have lower left quadrant pain. My muscle mass has improved. Body composition has improved. Uh, I don't get headaches. I don't get any rashes. I don't get athlete's foot. All the stuff that troubled me when I was high carb, completely and utterly gone. First question I'll start off with is when it comes to fat loss and body recomposition, how important is counting calories? How important is calories, especially if you are carnivore? I'd love to start with Bart. Oh, Bella, you're a bad girl, aren't you? Because you, you, you're just feeding me that one, aren't you? <laughs> Yeah. Look, the last thing I think the person should do is count calories or even attempt to count calories. At the end of the day, calories are a scientific measurement of the amount of heat that can be released by burning a sample of food rapidly inside a closed thermodynamic system called a bomb calorimeter. So a lot of people have probably heard me in the past scoff and snigger when people talk about calories and say quite parsimoniously, what are you talking about? Calories are heat. And they're not they're nothing else. They are explicitly measured as such. They are defined as such. That's what they are. And then people will say, well, thermodynamics, of course, there's a heat equivalence principle. So you can say that heat energy is equivalent to another form of energy. Yes, that's absolutely true. It's like saying pounds sterling are equivalent to the greenback dollar with a conversion rate, absolutely. But you need a, some kind of mechanism, some kind of banking institution, some kind of electronic format in which you can transfer those funds. The problem with the human body is we don't have machinery that can encapsulate and use heat to do work. So to suggest that because there is... X amount of heat energy releasable from a food stuff, that that's how much energy you are going to derive by eating that food is fundamentally ridiculous. It's absolutely anti-science at its core. It's simplifying something down to such a level that you've actually removed its utility entirely. And I'm a big campaigner on this. The last thing you should do is enter everything you eat into some ridiculous computer program that so-called counts your calories and tells you you're a good boy or you're a good girl because you've eaten the right amount of calories. It's just silly. I mean, I could talk about this all day, but I'll leave space for my uh, for my colleagues to add their bits as well. So yeah, that's me on that one. Stephen, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Well, yeah, obviously, um, 100% agree with Bart. I mean, calories were originally to look at the efficiency of steam engines. I mean, nothing to do with nutrition whatsoever. Um, What I would say is sometimes you can do a simple thought experiment and imagine someone eating 2,000 calories of uh, chocolate chip cookies and somebody eating 2,000 calories of fish, let's just say, as an example. And if you looked at them after a month, I think the one on 2,000 calories of chocolate chip cookies would look very unhealthy. And I think the person eating 2,000 calories of fish would look pretty healthy. So once you get into the basics of a, th- a simple sort of thought experiment like that and realise, well, yeah, calories are nonsense. It's actually more important about what we're eating. And obviously protein is a ridiculous number to look at because about 25% of the energy that allegedly is there from calories is used to digest it, whereas like with carbohydrates or fats, it's only 5%. So that's not even like for like. So if you allegedly had these 2,000 calories of protein, for instance, 500 would be used to digest it. So you can't do a simple, look at my meal, I've got 2,000 calories of which certain amount is protein, certain amount of carbohydrates or whatever. So that doesn't work. We have a completely variable demand from day to day of how much energy we are going to expand. I mean, if I'm in a cold room, I'm going to have a lot of energy going on warming me up. And if I'm in a warm room, I'm going to have a lot of energy cooling me down. And when I'm at the exact perfect temperature, that's going to be a different sort of amount of calories, alleged things that you need. 
So, and so none of it makes any common sense. It makes no scientific sense. It makes no common sense. The last eight weeks, most of the time, I have exceeded the 3,500 calorie mark and lost over 17 pounds in body fat. Well, that doesn't work out either. So, you know, um, it's obviously the fact I'm eating food that is not spiking my insulin and making me go into the fat storage. Fats and protein seems to be quite helpful in making me fitter and stronger. And of course, carbohydrates are non-essential. We can make carbohydrates from non-carbohydrate substrate, uh, substrate. So we don't need to ingest carbohydrates either. So uh, we need protein, we need fats, certainly don't need carbohydrates. It's better to just look at what you're eating and your hunger signals and satiety. Just listen to your body, really. And Raymond, thoughts on counting calories? I really believe we are hormonal creatures. If we get what our body needs or it feels like it needs, it has a direct response to it. And I believe that carnivore foods is where it gets its proper response. It's like, hey, I've got whatever essentials that I need, whether it's amino acids or proteins or even a certain amount of fats, then it actually responds back and says, okay, I'm good. Now, the problem with carbohydrates, it doesn't really respond that way. So the same calories of carbohydrates versus the same calories of fat or protein are totally different hormonal responses in our bodies. So if we say 3000 calories of a slice of cake versus, you know, a ribeye, are they really the same? A thought experiment, just like uh, Stephen says, you know what the results will be without even trying that. So let's look at the simplest part. Why do we want to measure calories anyways? Let's save that effort for other things. Like let's focus on proper nutrition. We all agree that counting calories is a waste of time. So then I'm sure a lot of the audience members who are watching here are wondering, okay, if not count calories or restrict calories, what else can I do or play around with to lose fat? So let me just throw this out there. What are some of your go-to tactics or ideas for someone who wants to lose fat, change their body composition, but does not want to restrict calories? Bart? Yeah, I would say what they should do is consume a 100% carnivore diet based on the muscle meats and associated fats. Don't worry about organs. You don't need to worry about that so much at all. Sure, you can eat some organ meats if you want to, but you don't need to. If you want to start out a program of recomping your body, you should probably do something similar to like what I did in the first two weeks of my carnivore challenge with coach Raymond and coach Emily and co do a program of priming. I would suggest that you do get together with the steak and butter gang and do it under their wise guidance and tutelage. Don't just run off and try and do this by yourself sort of thing. Cause there may be a, a few things that you need to react to and get some coaching on or whatever. But what I did was a thing called priming. And that's a way of getting all the nutrients into your body that you've actually been vastly lacking for years and years and years, while actually at the same time taking in more calories than you have effectively for many, many years. And I'll give you some numbers on this because we did this at the beginning of this year. I was consuming upwards of six and a half thousand calories a day for 14 days solid. And I have one of those biometric impedance scales that you stand on the thing and it puts a, an electrical current through your body and gives you a pretty accurate gauge really on not only your weight, but also how that's made up, fat, water, muscle, bone, all of that. And I can tell you in those two weeks that I was eating a ridiculous amount of food, more food than anyone would want to eat. It was actually unpleasant. Nonetheless, during that two weeks, I dropped 10 pounds by eating four and five times the amount of food that I had been for years and years previous to that. Most of that was water, sure, but the rest of it that wasn't water was fat. And my muscle mass remained rock solid, as did my skeletal mass, as did everything else. So I ate far more calories than I had been, far more, and there was three or four pounds of fat that came off. Bart, since you are the scientist here, could you explain the science behind this? Because I'm sure a lot of people are shocked. How yep. can someone lose weight when they eat 6,000 calories a day? Six, six and a half, in fact. Yeah. Um, well, Coach Raymond hit that one right on the head. 
we are absolutely hormonal creatures in terms of our body composition, the way our metabolic systems function. Your, your entire metabolic system is like a gearbox with several forward gears and several reverse gears. You can't run in forward and reverse. The same is true of your metabolic system. And if you've got your system geared for fat loss, that's what it's going to do. And if you've got excess energy coming in, it's going to use that for other purposes, not for fat storage. So that's exactly what was happening in my body. I was taking in the nutrient that I had been vastly short on. I was repleting my amino acid pools with their full range of everything. Um, my metabolic basal rate probably went up as well to keep everything in balance, whatever else. And all that time, my, my metabolic gearbox is still running in reverse and stripping fat off my body, despite the fact that I was eating probably to 2,250 calories of fat in a day. I want to show you something from a book that I use for people that don't believe me about fat stories. I lose a lot of clients on uh, my personal training side of things because I won't take them on for fat loss unless they change their nutrition. So I always get this book out, which is um, a book written before pharmaceutical companies were sponsoring books like this, Medical Physiology. That's a classic uh, one, book. Stephen, that one. It, it is a classic, absolute classic. And there's two sentences here, and I, I've highlighted this because I say to them, okay, well, look, if you want to increase your uh, metabolic use of fat, it does say here, all aspects of fat metabolism are greatly enhanced in the absence of insulin. And what spikes insulin the most is obviously carbohydrates. And uh, just to double uh, make it clear for them, in the absence of insulin, all the effects of insulin noted above causing storage of fat are reversed. So I just try to avoid any foods that raise insulin and that tends to be carbohydrates. Wow. During that whole priming phase, and we will definitely get into what exactly priming is with Coach Raymond, but Bart, during that priming phase, did you see any other benefits with healing? Any issues that you had that went away? Absolutely. I, I have suffered, among other things, I was talking about some of the, the psychological stuff a bit earlier on, but you know, I've, I've also had physical things like fibromyalgia, which actually left me at one point where probably four days out of seven, I couldn't get out of bed sort of thing. I was that jammed up. That's gone. Wow. Um, I have had every digestive disorder in the book that you could possibly name it at various points throughout my adult life. They're gone. I've had skin complaints. They're gone. My hair fell out when I was 28. It hasn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> you can't win them all. Um, just my whole outlook on life. Everything has, has been totally changed by by just realizing really that human beings are not generalists mm. any more than any other creature. When you think about a dog, what does a dog eat? What does a cat eat? What does what do duck bill platypuses eat? They're all specialists. They all have a niche. Why would you think human beings would be any different? Mm. We're not. We are obligate hyper carnivores. That's how we've evolved. We've evolved eating the muscle meats and fat of animals. Those are the genes selected for. Those are the organ systems we have. That is the metabolic system we have. It makes no sense to do anything different. Bravo. Well said. Let me go to Coach Raymond now. I'm sure everyone is wondering what the heck is priming? Could you explain it? Yes. Priming in the easy sense is uh, very simple as a matter of fact. So you go 100% carnivore. On the first week, it's a two-week process. On the first week, what you do is you eat three plus meals per day. You start off with breakfast. And if you're one of the types that does coffee, you have to have coffee after breakfast. That is critical because coffee hampers down the hunger response for later on, and you will not eat properly. So you need to be able to put in as much as possible. You're eating until comfortably stuffed. And you'll notice you'll probably love it at the first three days. And then afterwards, it becomes drudgery and work. Mm -hmm. And you have to put in the work. You're eating like it's your job. And what happens after a while is you won't be able to do those three meals anymore. Now, on the second week, you can go to three straight meals and it should be very easy from there. Once you do all of that process, the hormones actually gears up and says, look, 
It's going to push back at you and says, look, I'm satiated. I'm fine. I don't need any more. And it will tell you to settle down on the foods. Then fasting becomes easy because your hormones are saying, no, no, I, I, I'm good. I'm really good. Before anybody says, oh, two weeks, I can definitely do that. There are some people that have starved themselves for so long that they may need longer than two weeks. What I always tell everybody is that if you feel comfortable under three meals and you're loving it, up your meal and go harder at it until you can't do it anymore. From my personal experience with priming, I would say it's an under eater, a chronic calorie restrictors dream to be able to prime, to be able to have permission to just let go and eat. If you're watching and you're new to the carnivore diet, still learning about this lifestyle or new to my page, please know that there are things that you can do to ease the adaptation phase symptoms. So adaptation, it usually happens to anybody who starts the carnivore diet, especially those who really jump in head first without any real transition. You may feel headaches, you may feel low energy, fatigue, a lot of muscle cramping, especially if you are active. If you have these types of symptoms, I highly recommend that you supplement with electrolytes. You know exactly what to expect from the ingredients. They promise zero fillers, zero gluten, absolutely zero sugar. I recommend this color called the raw unflavored one. These are what the free sample packs look like and you guys can get a free sample pack with any purchase with the URL on the screen, drinklmnt.com slash SBGAL. I have also linked it down below in the description box. The most important one that I recommend, this blue one right here, is also included in the free sample pack, just in case you want to try it out before you commit to a full size box. I do want to go to coach Steven though. You had a different response to priming instead of Bart, where he started losing weight, you saw weight gain. So could you talk about that, your experience? Well, yeah, let me clear that up. Actually, the, the weight gain was deliberate before I started the priming because we wanted to have a before and after. So I deliberately put weight on by eating stuff that uh, other people feel is problematic, but um, they're not quite sure. So I gained, uh, Bart doesn't even know this, I think, actually. So who might be surprised? I managed to gain 20 pounds and I wasn't going that mad. Uh, exactly the same thing as what Bart was saying. I loved priming uh, initially and saw four pounds come off in the first week when I was eating so much food. But I just want to go a little bit more basic and split the screen down the middle and say, look at what you're saying to people. Let's talk about calorie restriction. Make yourself starving. Make yourself restricted. Make yourself hungry. How is that going to help you long term? That's just going to make you want to eat and eat and eat. Whereas this way, on the other side, you prime. And I can remember watching Bart saying the same thing as I felt after about a week. I do not want to eat. <laughs> Please, can you stop me eating for a bit? Now, surely that is long term and sustainable because you're just simply listening to your body and saying, well, right, I've had enough. Whereas the other way of restricting, you are constantly saying, I've never had enough. And you will just be thinking about food all the time. You will eat all the wrong things and you will crave. So to me, I'm just trying to come away from the science and just look at what happens to you as a person and how you feel. And to me, it just seems like a no brainer. If you say to a child, there are 10 doors, but you cannot go through door nine. <laughs> that's the door they want to go through. You restrict with food. That's all you think about all the time. That's all you think about. So uh, I got to the point where I literally said to uh, Raymond, do I have to do two weeks? Now, in hindsight, I'm glad I did because the food freedom from that knock-on effect of completely making sure that I had enough nutrients, because I think even with my uh, two and a half years of carnival, maybe there was times when I wasn't eating enough of X, Y, Z, you know, so <laughs> priming makes sure you definitely get enough of enough of everything so after the two weeks i was really um down with a fair bit of body fat and also feeling really confident about the rest of the journey so it definitely worked for me both um physically and mentally incredible actually can i can i just add just really briefly there to that Stephen? brilliant as usual of course <laughs> that the thing about calories and when you're restricting calories as well as all the hormonal stuff, as well as all the putting yourself behind the eight ball, because calories are so grossly inaccurate as a means to gauge energy, 
the only way to make calories in, calories out work for you for predictable fat loss Mm -hmm. is to vastly, grossly under eat. And we're talking, you need to reduce your caloric intake by 750, 1,000 in some cases before you can be sure that you definitely will get some fat loss over time as a result of that. That is going to predispose you not only to a hormonal imbalance that you might find it's a very difficult crater to crawl out of, but also to nutrient deficiencies as well. Yes. So that's another reason why you absolutely should not restrict calories and count calories. Just finally, another thing that people don't realize is that in most countries, including the US, the number of calories listed on the label of a food, when you pick it up and look at the calories on the back, that is allowed to be inaccurate by up to 20% either way under law. Before you even start thinking about the inaccuracies of calories, even if they were accurate, they can be 20% out. Forget it, boys and girls. This is silly. Yes. Thank you for saying that. Just to add to what Bart said, when you restrict your calories that low, and I am definitely living proof, I was living proof of practicing that tactic, especially if you're female, you will feel repercussions that affect your cycle, your hormone health, and even worse, hair you're going to start losing hair. And I'm sure men can relate to this one too. When you under eat that much, and like Bart said, (laughs) you lose things that you cherish so much and then you regret it. And these um, effects, at least for myself and a lot of women that I talk to, they last a long time. We all agree here that you don't have to take that approach of restricting calories, of under eating, none of that. Going carnivore is kind of the first step. And then if you're open to it, try out priming. So what does priming prime for? Is it fasting? Is fasting necessary? Go ahead, Raymond. No, absolutely not. So priming is critical though. That is a must. So the question that we have is what is fasting? And that's where it gets a little tricky. So a lot of folks think, oh, I'm priming so that I can fast. Well, in a way, if you consider fasting two meals a day, you know, with the keto way, you're easily just going to go a long period of time without wanting to eat. Is that called fasting? In my opinion, it's not, but I don't know another word for it. So most people consider that timing 16, eight as fasting. So you'll probably get there automatically. And some people even can go 20 hours easily without wanting to eat. Is that fasting? I don't think so. That's where we have to differentiate. You've eaten so well that your body's just like, I just don't want to eat that often. I'm just good. I'm happy where I'm at. So Bart, what results did you see after doing the entire fasting part of the program? Yeah. At the end of the 90 days, um, there there was a video on my channel before most of my videos disappeared very recently, and it will be back. Um, In the meantime, I've got a, a short five minute highlight section of that video where Raymond, Stephen and Emily and others were there and Pim was there and and we we did the big reveal and we had the before and after photos. I mean, a picture tells a thousand words. And so it's um, purely I went from dad bod, absolutely dad bod, round, bloated, you know, the typical apple shape thing to actually, you know, having a six pack within 90 days. It was incredible. I wanted to showcase some female before and afters just to show that Raymond's 90-day program can be geared towards women and men. This is Jess. She has three kids. She's in her 40s. And this is her 90-day progress. The left is day one. Right side is day 90 after she completed Coach Raymond's 90-day feasting and fasting program. Just fantastic. And of course, I have to showcase our very own Coach Emily Harvo, who teaches the feasting and fasting classes alongside Coach Raymond in the Steak and Butter Gang. She is extremely passionate about combining fasting and the carnivore diet to maximize results in weight loss, body composition, and skin tightening results. Again, if you would like to learn every step of this 90 day feasting and fasting program that coach Raymond teaches alongside coach Emily, please go to spgmeetup.com and join the next carnivore challenge to access all live zoom meetings and classes. 
And and I'd also like to endorse what Raymond was saying there about fasting. As a scientist, one of the things that's really important to me is a thing called operational definition. And it means if you're going to use a term, before you say, use that term, you say, and when I use this word, fasting, here is what I mean. So that's an operational definition. And for me, I operationally define fasting as beginning at 72 hours with no food intake. Anything short of 72 hours is not fasting. It's something else for which, as Raymond says, we don't really have a term. (laughs) I I just call it just not eating. Mm. Because fasting for me is a metabolic thing. It's, It's a response physiologically that your body undertakes after a period of time without food intake. And those effects include autophagy, the release of adult stem cells, a reset of your immune system, all sorts of things start going on in your body. And that kicks in at around about 72 hours. So for me, that's where we draw the line and we say, okay, from from hour 73 onwards, now we're fasting. That's my definition of it, personally. Strange that I didn't know Bart was going to say that. And it's I've been thinking at it like that, but slightly different, thinking you eat and then you are in a fed state for a long period of time. For instance, use a stupid example. You don't fill up your car with petrol and then start driving and think, right, uh, I'm not filling up my car with petrol. I'm not filling up my car with petrol. You don't constantly remind yourself you're not filling up your car with petrol. You wait until it's all used up. And, you know, this is what I was trying to say to Raymond when I started. We need to think of a phrase that sums up the Fed state. Because if you eat, say you do two, Matt, you do two meals one day, and the next day you don't eat. Well, you are using your storage. <laughs> You're using your amino acids, your fats to get through that day. You're not fasting. I mean, right now, all four of us are not thinking, look at us all fasting right now. Which is getting on with life. So, um, Bart, you know, obviously because of his scientific background, tends to talk about the physiological reason why 72 hours kicks in. Uh, I'm just trying to look at the common sense that we just don't constantly go, right, I'm on a phone call and I'm also fasting. I'm doing a Zoom call now and I'm fasting. I, uh, I'm going down to watch a football match and I'll be fasting while I'm, you just get on with life. And then at some point you're going to listen to your hunger signals and your body is going to say to you, maybe it's now time to eat. And whether that is 36 hours, 72 hours, 50 hours, four hours, you know, you start to be intuitive about what you need. And once you start listening to your body, you realize that all of the things, even breakfast, dinner, lunch, it's all man-made, arbitrary names which you just don't need to follow we need to get away from the word fasting i really do and just think maybe like we're gonna Mm. eat and then we're gonna be in the fed state for a bit that's it those who are watching if you can come up with a better word for fasting comment it down below i'd love to see your ideas so coach steven since i have you could you talk a little bit about your current progress since you are in the thick of this 90-day feasting and fasting program with coach raymond yeah, I can definitely talk a bit about that. The first two weeks were really interesting to prime. Like I say, um, I lost a, a lot of the body fat that I put on. I lost most of what I've lost so far. I, you know, I'm about 17 pounds down now. About 15 pounds I lost before I'd even have one day of, of not eating. It wasn't calorie restriction. It wasn't skipping a day of eating. It was what I was eating. And uh, the plan that Raymond had set out, you know, uh, it just simply worked to change my body composition. Quite surprising. Obviously, I dumped the stuff that um, I'd put weight on. So I wasn't having any yogurt anymore, which is troublesome for me. And the dark chocolate completely went, which so many people keep saying, oh, dark chocolate's great. You know, a little bit of dark chocolate won't hurt you. Absolutely. That's not true. And the caffeinated um, coffee, which I know some people can sort of get away with. But for me, not optimal because it um, obviously raises your blood sugar and it's a stimulant. So it was not good for me. The weight loss I've only added because people seem interested in it. I'm not interested in it at all. The mainstream people and people like YouTube and watch these experiments are really obsessed with the scale, whereas I found it to be slightly demotivating, even when I was 
losing weight more often than not. Uh, I got up a couple of mornings and said to Raymond, uh, I got on the scale and I'd actually gained a pound or something, which was demotivating in one respect. But I felt brilliant. I felt lighter. I looked better. You know, my clothes fit, fitted better. And I had that typical sort of lost a bit, gained a little bit, lost a bit, gained a little bit, a gradual trend of going downwards. Food freedom. That's the biggest thing, I think, where I'm just not thinking about food like I used to. Even before, my wife would often say, you you talk about what we're going to have tonight quite a bit or, you know, what we're going to eat. And that's completely gone. I'm looking forward to getting back to having a six pack. And as you know, Bella, you talked to me into doing a video when I'd gained the weight, which was highly embarrassing to be in my pants and very bloated and 20 pounds heavier than I had been. Uh, and we did that 360. <laughs> yeah. you know, horrible thing to do. So, uh, uh, and we've done that three times now and I haven't sent you the latest ones and I'm retaining my muscle mass. I'm, I'm happy with that. Still a bit able to work out. I deliberately didn't work out for 10 days because I didn't want people to say, oh, it's all the exercise. Because like I say, the, the, the non-believers look for reasons why what you're saying is, is working other than the thing that's working. So even when I didn't exercise for 10 days, even that didn't change anything. Wow. So it wasn't the exercise that was changing my body composition. It was definitely the nutrition, definitely 100%. And Stephen, how far along into the program are you and what type of fast is Raymond having you do currently? I am uh, eight weeks. So uh, next next week, 4th of July, American Independence Day is the beginning of level three. So uh, I've got a week of alternate days. So I'm uh, too mad. Well, tomorrow I'm skipping, then it's too mad, then I'm skipping, t- too mad, skipping. So alternate days of uh, not eating. And all four levels, by the way, there are total of four levels. Uh, Level one is the priming protocol. Level two, three, and four will explore fasting with Coach Raymond. Raymond, can you just give a little sneak peek of what type of schedules you take us through? Yes. So this program is not created to say, hey, I'm going to automate you for the rest of your life. That's not the idea. The idea for you to learn modalities and also timing. So the first thing, priming is a must, okay? Once you get through priming, you'll be learning how to do OMADs comfortably, uh, one meal a day. Uh, Well, first two meals a day, then one meal a day. Then you're going to learn how to do alternate day fast. Alternate day fast is very simple. It's just you eat one day and you don't eat the next day. That's the alternate part of it. And I like to keep it in two meals. Some, some uh, other modalities will keep it where you eat all day long. I like to keep it in two meals. Then we go into what we test out a little 72. We want to see how that feels on our body. And then we start playing with what's called rolling 48. And it's very simple. We eat one meal on our on days and on our off days, we don't eat at all. And we just roll those. Once you've completed five of the alternate day fast and five of the rolling 48 and a 72, pretty much you've learned so much about your body. And that's at the point you can start realizing what your own body is capable of. None of this is as important, believe it or not, as actually sticking with a carnivore diet. That is the critical piece. The reason I say this is without that food freedom that the carnivore diet allows you, then these fasting will not be possible because you'll be on a roller coaster of yo-yoing and that's not a good thing. We want to first beat that food addiction and the sugar cravings. And that's why I feel like priming is so powerful. Raymond has designed the priming two-week program to kind of tackle everything and also promote a lot of deep healing for those who have a lot of things to heal. So BART is perfect as a follow-up. You said, Raymond, this whole feasting fasting program is not for life. You're not going to hold our hand forever. And there is so much room to be flexible and choose what you love, what you don't love. So BART, what have you implemented out of this feasting fasting program? How are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing great. I've maintained the body composition changes now for the best part of seven months. Well, from the beginning of the, of the whole process, um, from the end of the process, it's now more than three months on. I haven't put 
the weight back on. We shouldn't really call it weight, by the way. We should call it the fat because that's what it is. I haven't put the fat back on, so that's been maintained. You've hit the nail on the head there with the freedom thing. A lot of people think about when you you say, like, I'm eating just muscle meat and associated fat, salt and water, butter. They go, well, isn't that restrictive? And I go, no, I'm not restricted. I have freedom beyond words. The thing I say to people is the reason that we eat food is so that we might live. It is not the other way around. Okay. We are not restricted. It's like saying, uh, because like to the human body, uh, carbohydrates in excess are poisonous. They are a toxin. So it's like saying, if I have a diet that contains no cyanide, that I have an extremely cyanide restricted diet. I'm not restricted. I'm just eating sensibly. Um, And frankly, you know, if you've got no other source of enjoyment in your life than food, dopamine responses i suggest i suggest strongly that you go and have a look at your life really honestly so that's that's the freedom now let me be quite explicit about freedoms as well because it's been alluded to and i'm going to be explicit here i had a problem with alcohol i was not in control now i can drink some alcohol on any given day or not if i want to at my sole discretion at my complete control And I choose not, frankly, because of its effects. So since the end of my challenge, if you like, my my initial 90-day hand-holding period, I have consumed alcohol on three occasions since then. Previous to that, I was drinking every single day without let or hindrance, actually. That's the freedom there. The freedom on the food thing is is great. I I can eat on any given day heartily. To satiety completely, muscle meat, fat, salt, water, butter. I can not eat at all on any given day at my whim and desire. Whenever I decide I don't feel like eating today, I don't need to eat today. My body gives me great signals, awesome signals, which I just follow pretty much. The fact that I don't have to think about food or drink or any kind of social issues around any of that kind of stuff because it just becomes what you do. I can go to a social function where there is food and drink and not touch any of it. I can do that. That's not a problem at all. It doesn't fit in with my program. My body isn't telling me I need that stuff. I might go, oh, that would be nice. I'll get a nice dopamine hit out of that. But I can also, within seconds, go, but so what? What's the point? I don't need that and leave it there. I'm I'm in control. It's freedom. It's not restriction. I think I've covered it. Amazing. What profound success Bart has experienced even after being walked through the complete 90 days. So I'm going to actually wrap up this conversation. I am more than happy to do a part two with these guests. Just let me know down below in the comment section if you have any follow-up questions for the coaches and for Bart, and I'm happy to invite them back on. Real quick, each of you, where can people find you? And if you have any exciting announcements, please do share. Bart first. Yes, uh, my channel has been under a period of renaissance, shall we say, for a few weeks. It's been offline while I was dealing with one or two issues with the fine, fine folk at YouTube and some of their rules and regulations and things. My channel is now fully up and running again. It's all new, all new content. It's of a completely different style to what it used to be. Those of you who appreciated my old abrasive style can still enjoy that stuff over on the Odyssey platform. All that stuff is still there. You can watch it there if you want to. Any future videos of an abrasive nature, including short words like the F word, fasting, Mm -hmm. of course, those kind of things, um, they can watch that stuff over there on my Odyssey channel. On the YouTube, now it's going to be all professional, all collar and tie, all science, all that kind of stuff, being professorial and all of that. And that's on my main YouTube channel, which is called Bart K Health Science. But look, you just punch my name into any search engine and you can't not find me. I've also got four or five other YouTube channels that you might be interested in. Most of them are usually linked in the show notes underneath all the videos on my main on my main channel. So to save time, just go there and find me. I will link everything down below in the description box. Please check it out. Raymond. Best way to find me is at the Steak and Butter Gang. I'm there every every meeting. 
So you can see me there Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. I lead my own uh, uh, priming meeting. So please join Bella's Challenge. This is uh, a group that Bella has created. You can also reach me on Instagram and Facebook. And I do have my own YouTube channel, uh, Raymond Nazon, that helps out folks uh, to give little carnivore tips and all that. And you can see Bart's story there. But that's the best way to reach me is Steak and Butter Gang. Excellent. And Coach Steven? Yeah, similar to Raymond, you can find me at the Steak and Butter Girl. Uh, I host on Fridays a fat loss meeting which is an hour and it's open to your questions. And then on Sunday, I do health concerns again for an hour, which is always nice. And you can join normally about a hundred people in the community that have tons and tons of questions. So you have a lot of background from other people as well, giving you lots of help. I'm, I'm on Instagram. I am the UK carnivore and I do have a YouTube channel as well. Thank you gentlemen for your time and for this fabulous conversation. Please don't forget to hit like. And also if you want to meet all three of these gentlemen come join the July Carnivore Challenge. Professor Bart K will actually be part of the panel of guest speakers in July. So we will get to ask all of our questions for Bart K. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Bella. This was wonderful. Thank you, Bella. By the way, everything that we discuss in this video is taught in detail and in depth, step by step in the Steak and Butter Gang 30 day carnivore challenges. So if you are watching this video in the future and you would like to try out this 90 day program, please join in on the Steak and Butter Gang 30 day carnivore challenges any month to access Coach Raymond's feasting and fasting Zoom classes. The link to sign up and join the Steak and Butter Gang is sbgmeetup.com as shown on the screen. You can also also click the link down below in the description box for more details and to directly sign up.